Universal is set to open their newest theme park, Epic Universe, in Orlando in less than a year. And by all accounts, it looks set to redefine the standard of what a modern theme park can be. As a result, fan interest is skyrocketing and ticket demand is going to be through the roof. Now, the rumor is that Universal is going to bundle tickets and make you buy tickets for all parks, which means they're going to make you go to the other two older parks, whether you want to or not. Now, when it comes to Universal's original park in Florida, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's some great attractions. There's some mid attractions. There's some eh, attractions, but everything changed when the boy who lived showed up and brought his fire breathing dragon with him. Yeah, I'm looking at you, you big, beautiful, fire breathing, revenue generating dragon. Mwah. There's also rides like Jimmy Fallon and uh, whatever this bit of silliness is. But if Epic Universe is going to raise the standard, how will the other parks look in comparison? Which brings us to Project Epic, bringing Universal Studios up to Epic Universe standards. Project Epic has four main areas. Increase park capacity, increase the number of dark rides, replace any weaker attractions, and maintain Epic standards. Now, before we start willy-nilly coming up with ideas, let's take a quick inventory of what the current park offers. Here's a handy dandy list from Wonderful World of Travel. See what they did. We got the two rides in uh, Diagon Alley. We've got Transformers. We've got the roller coaster, the two minion rides, Mummy, Jimmy Fallon, the OG ET, Fast and Furious, Men in Black, and the two Springfield rides, including Kang and whoever's Dumbo clone. And Dream, DreamWorks Land is now open with the troller coaster. So, Harry Potter, you're good to go, buddy. You revenue-generating dude. Fast and Furious, you're going to get a new location and a much better ride. And we're going to put an awesome ride in this location. Revenge of the Mummy, they put money in you recently. People still love it. You're good to go. Same for Transformers. Autobots, roll out. You're just fine. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, I love you, buddy, but we need the building. R.I.P. Rip Ride Rocket lived a great life in an incredibly small footprint, but you're going to get an upgrade. And the Minions are so successful right now, I think they might deserve a coaster. The Born Stuntacular is a great show from a moribund franchise, and I don't have a better idea. But I might have a better idea for something to put in this spot where the makeup show is. Stephen, I promise I would never touch this ride unless it was to upgrade the technology so children of all ages could enjoy it for decades after we're both long gone. DreamWorks Land is now open. Universal did a great job updating the IP without breaking the bank. The Troller Coaster is an attraction. It's going. Simpsons is going away because the mouse owns it. It's going to be gone by 2028, probably replaced by Pokemon. Men in Black, great shooter, innovative a quarter of a century ago. It's a moribund franchise right now. And we have the Fear Factor stage. Hard to believe that was a thing. Now that we've inventoried the current rides, let's look for possible expansion areas. It's well known that Universal is moving most, if not all, of their backstage functions to the new South Campus. They have big new warehouses where they can store stuff. They've got new office buildings. That's right behind Harry Potter. That'd be cool to go to work right there. They're still building stuff. So when it comes to this part of the park, let's highlight in red all of the possible backstage areas we might be able to use now. We have the area behind the makeup show. We have the area behind Louie's at the edge of New York. We have these uh, this corner of New York over by where the coaster is right now. We have these two buildings across the street behind Fast and Furious that I'm looking at. We have this large area that's currently home to four Halloween Horror Night tents. And we have the Mother Load, this giant area of uh, studio space at the south end of the park. We also have this innocuous little triangle at the edge of New York. Now, this looks great. It's very well constructed. It's literally a f movie set. But you know what it's not? A big honking dark ride sitting right in the middle of your park, increasing your capacity and chewing through 
thousands and thousands of satisfied customers in air-conditioned splendor every day. Now, the right in California is not that big. It's sort of a truncated triangle right here. And if we measure it with the admittedly don't trust it Google Earth, we get a around 20 and a half thousand square feet, roughly. I measured it 10 times, I took the middle. And if we measure our triangle, we're about 10,000 feet short. But if we took this street, we'll leave an alleyway so you can still get in Finnegan's, but if we took that area, all of a sudden, we're a whole lot closer to the same area as the California ride, 20 and a half thousand square feet, closely. Now, before anybody says a word about the Blues Brothers stage, and no offense to these guys, I am a Blues Brother, okay? I have been playing Bones Malone's Blues Brothers book for decades, for thousands and thousands of people. All right. I played a gig with Danny Aykroyd with a red trombone. He told me I had a hot bone. He was right. So I am bona fide, certified, and Elwood Blues approved. And if you think the Blues Brothers should be two guys on the back porch with a sax player, hey, look, I get where people might have thought it was a joke. I really do. But what Danny and John pulled off, what they accomplished, what they did. They assembled one of the greatest bands in the history of the United States of America, and those guys almost single-handedly resuscitated a significant portion of the American songbook that was in danger of just going away. And I'm not just saying this because I'm Facebook friends with Bones, and I'm not saying this because I played a couple of gigs with these with guys from the band, all right? Because the truth is, what Danny and John did was historic, it was iconic, and it was not a joke, and don't you ever forget it. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the park. So, if we let's just say we can use this little triangle of space, and let's say we can use these backstage areas. Now we get down to brass tacks, okay? What is the economic force driving the growth of these parks? What is the big thing that brings in the most people, the most revenue? It's not a trick question. Everybody knows it's Harry Potter. Everything got better when Harry Potter showed up. And so what would be better than Harry Potter? Yep, more Harry Potter. And if we're going to have Wizarding London, we might as well have the Big Ben Drop Tower. And uh, eventually, across the way, Pokemon will probably take over the Simpsons. And this is where I want to put the Fast and Furious new uh, attraction. So as for these two buildings behind Fast and Furious, Google Earth tells me that's the Universal Orlando Human Resources. Now, I don't know much, but I bet you a donut that's going to get moved down to the South Campus along with most of the other administrative functions. So if we... Now let's ask ourselves a question. What does this park really need? Do you see the hint? Yeah, it's right there. Hagrid's is incredibly popular. People stand in line for, for a long time for this ride. They love it. Velocicoaster is so popular, Universal is spending millions of dollars right now to build a new coaster shed just so they can inspect all of the coasters before the ride opens to, ink, to help with capacity because of demand. So what if we took the great elements of both of these rides and put them together with a night bus theme. I propose that Universal could build the biggest, baddest coaster yet. The night bus coaster, a sprawling indoor, outdoor, water spinning ride that goes past the new um, fronts that we're gonna build for increased retail around the Big Ben drop tower, and if we need it, we can turn this backstage area behind Louie's into the new coaster shed. So the where the two existing buildings are behind the street, we can build a big coaster building with an overpass so we don't mess up the Hogwarts Express. As many brake runs as we can put in there with show because that's going to increase the capacity of the coaster. We're going to have these new uh, commercial storefront areas for dining and uh, retail. We're going to cover the marina, build it up so the boats can actually have a covered space. 
uh, the after the indoor business, the coaster comes screaming out of the building up in Immelman and been, then back down over the street behind Big Ben through the newly created alleyway and then over the water for a couple of rolls before going back over the street and heading back into the show building. And the only problem with this is noise. You see, these apartments right here, they're right behind the park. And if we measure how far they are from a coaster, there's a reason coasters have been on that side of the park, slightly less than half a mile. But where we're talking about now, we're not even a thousand feet away. So you've got all these neighbors over here, and you can't just willy-nilly build a loud, screaming attraction right there. So I propose using half pipes like Universal's going to do with their new coaster in Hollywood, and you could even paint them to look like a road surface. Now, as for Big Ben, it's one of the most iconic structures in the world. It's gorgeous. It's huge. The tower itself is actually over 300 feet. So we could scale it down to less than 200 feet, and we could get a drop tower ride in there. But I can see where Universal might not think that's enough bang for their buck and might not want to do that, but boy, it would look cool. Now, as for where the Fear Factor stage is, what if we had a Wizarding World live theater extravaganza in a theater? Now, London has an amazing theater district, all kind of historic architecture. Um, a talented architect could take a lot of these architectural elements from these buildings and combine them into, you know, an original looking structure, or we could just copy that because, man, that's gorgeous. I kind of love that. But for the interior, I was thinking something like the old Vic. A lot of gold, uh, crimson, everything's rigged. The floor, the ceiling, the seats, everything's rigged for Wizarding World special effects. And I do have an idea for an original show they could do, but I'm not going to tell you right now. Sorry. Now, before we talk about what to do with Men in Black, let's talk about wands. Did you know Universal sells wands? Did you know that Universal sells a lot of wands and that they are significant revenue generator for the company? So it seems to me that if you want to sell more wands, you should have an attraction where the guests can use the wands. Now, currently, you can walk around, point your wand in a window, make things do stuff, and that's all super cool and all. But if you want to get serious about increasing your wand sales, like if you want to triple this guy's wand sales, I think you should give him a wand shooter. Oh, and look, there's a shooter right there. Uh, Men in Black. It was innovative a quarter century ago. It's a moribund dead franchise. Nobody's coming to the park for that. But what if we could turn it into a wand shooter? Now, Alicia Stella at Orlando Park Stop, theme park stop. If you're not following Alicia, you're not even trying. She's the best. She reported a couple of years ago that Universal was working on technology to try to do live wand battles using electricity. If that's not good to go, we've got these AR goggles that they're using on Mario Kart. So what if instead of riding around and, you know, seeing Bowser and all that stuff, what if we could actually have a wand battle, you know, with the characters that from the movies. What if we could fight he who shall not be named? I think Harry Potter fans would go gaga kooky over that. As for the exterior, colorful townhouse, uh, townhouses would be fine. Um, and for this area in front, I think that needs a little reworking. Um, there's bathrooms there that are left over from Jaws, remodel those, you need bathrooms, but this area is marked in green because that's the color of money that you're leaving on the table. 
by not having increased retail and dining space there. Now, next to that, I propose the Fast and Furious slot car attraction called Fast and Furious Drifting. It's a multi-story slot car race that would be Universal's answer to Test Track and Radiator Springs. Currently, this area has Halloween Horror Night tents. And I think if you move stuff around, you could still have the tents back there, but have room for this attraction. So that covers the front of the park. But what about the south end of the park? Well, to get started, we would probably need to close two attractions. Uh, need to close Rip Ride Rocket, and then right next door, we would close Race Through New York with Jimmy Fallon. And I'm just going to get greedy and take the Universal Amphitheater of AstroTurf because I want it for the coaster. So let's say we could put Secret Life of Pets in this location. Is there another dark ride we can put in this part of the park? Maybe. How about Beetlejuice? And before you say there's no room, depending on how you measure, you might be able to have almost or more room than E.T. And that's plenty of room. So Beetlejuice is instantly recognizable, iconic, everybody knows it, iconic imagery, iconic music. Danny Elfman's already doing music for Dark Universe. That'd be no problem. It's already been turned into a stage show, so some of the legwork has already been done. So this could be a Omnimover-style ride that would be Universal's high-energy manic answer to the Haunted Mansion, um, taking people through all of this sort of Beetlejuice imagery. Now, it's not a dead franchise. There's a sequel coming out, and if it's successful at all, there'll be a third film, so this property will still be in the consciousness of the public. And if it's full of all of this whacked-out Tim Burton visual imagery, this could really be a substantial answer to The Haunted Mansion. Uh, Monsters Unchained notwithstanding, because that's just going to blow everybody away with how great it is. So what kind of roller coaster are we talking about? How about Minion Madness Coaster? A spinning coaster, yellow track, blue cars, just like the Minion's color scheme, a dramatic spike at the front of the park with a switch track, a big show building in the back parking lot where we do lots of uh, minion business, a uh, double loop with non-inverting loops, and then a giant spaghetti ball of track right in the middle so the, for the replacement of the Jimmy Fallon ride, I suggest the Universal Star Theater, a multi-show theater uh, with several shows a day. Now, Universal Music Group, same company owns the park, has an insane amount of music publishing. It's crazy how much music publishing rights they own for decades and decades decades of artists of every different stripe and flavor. Now, the non-musicians might not understand this, but I'm going to break it down for you. If you've got an audio animatronic band, they can play all day. All you got to do is pay the electric bill. But humans can't do that. You see, the best performers on earth are on Broadway, and they perform six, seven times a week, not six to seven times a day. So if you want to have a day's worth of shows in your schedule, you've either got to have one show with a giant cast so everybody can swap off, or you have a series of rotating shows. Let's say there's six shows a day and there's two, and there's three different shows and each show goes twice. So you can have shows from every decade. You can have every shows for every conceivable holiday. You can have... The Universal Monsters have a Halloween show. You could bring in Sen Sensational Inside, the show they're currently doing out on the lagoon, and you could bring in, you know, uh, visuals for that. You could have Sing live. Not my idea. They're already doing it. Sing is on the road, and there's no reason that couldn't play in the park. You can have live bands, live orchestras, live local groups, professional groups, local jazz bands, live jazz bands. I mean, you could even now have the Blues Brothers show and put them on a real stage. Now, you're going to need to build dressing rooms. 
you're going to need to build all kind of back of the house for equipment and costumes and all the stuff you need. But I think there's enough room here to do that once the coaster is gone out of the way. And this would be a living, breathing attraction. Now, next to that proposed theater is this little corner of the park. Now, it's not even 30,000 square feet. But what if we went vertical? I could see a Ghostbusters AR shooter. Um, once again, we have the Hogwarts Express, and we cannot mess with that golden goose. But all we would need is a front facade similar to the public library facade we've got now. And if we use the AR vision, like in Mario Kart, instead of seeing Toad and Luigi, what if we could see the Ghostbusters? What if we could see this coming out of your gun while you're on the ride? And what if you were hunting down this Technicolor, you know, hodgepodge of whacked out ghosts? Um, this would be an incredibly popular ride. And I'm pretty sure it would be Ghostbuster approved. So, is that it? Well, I have a really big, audacious, impractical idea for this studio space, but this video is getting long enough, and I think it deserves its own video. So, the last thing we'll do is give E.T., the OG original ride from when the park opened, a proper upgrade so it can last decades into the future for children of all ages. And then... I think we should clean up the front door a little bit. I much prefer this older color scheme with the white arches than the blah beige right now. You can make those letters light up in different colors. And as for the iconic universal globe, what if we had a mini LED sphere like they've got in Vegas except smaller? Now, this could project anything you want, any kind of graphic, updates, you know, anything you want, including all of your logos throughout history, which I think would be pretty cool. But at the very least, I really would like to see that fence get a revamp. That's just kind of... Mm. And one more thing. Now, I have no idea who owns the regatta at Universal Apartments. I don't know if Universal owns them, if they've tried to own them, if they don't own them. I don't know about zoning. But what I do know is that if Universal could get their hands on that property and convert it into a Harry Potter Wizarding World B&B &B with a park entrance and early admission, they would take all the money. And I do have one more thing. This logo, I've been looking at it and it's starting to bother me. Because if you look at it up close, the continents are raised with a drop shadow. And then Mexico's just chopped in half. Central America's gone. The top part of South America's gone. And you might not think that's a big deal, but universe, uh, logos are supposed to work on a subliminal level. And this one doesn't. If you want to have a world-class theme park, I really think you need a better logo than that. So be sure to check out my previous video, my pitch for Lands of Zelda, and stay tuned. Look out for Project Epic Part 2, where we bring Islands of Adventure up to epic standards. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, take it easy.